Hi, sleepy bear. Hi, sleepy Milo. Are you being a good craft buddy today? Are you being a good craft buddy? Who's a good boy? <laughs> Who's a good boy? You are, aren't you? Oh, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. I love you. Let's go make a card, okay? <laughs> okay. I love you. We'll have snacks when we're all done. Yeah, we will. Hi, this is Jenna from Brown Dog Craft Company, and today we're going to be making some fun spring shaker cards using the umbrella shaker die set and umbrella background uh, layering stencil from Pretty Pink Posh. So first I'm just showing you these are the dies for the shaker die set. Um, it cuts out everything you'll need to make the shaker, the back, the front. Uh, these are some of the colors I'm going to use. So we're going to make two cards today. One will be purple and one will be pink. So my purple inks are going to be Simon Says Stamp, Positively Saturated Inks in Lilac and Orchid. And then the pink one is going to be Carnation and Peony. And then each one is going to use um, charcoal ink for um, different pieces of the layering stencil. I also am going to use uh, some Lawn Fawn stencil paste in Fairy Dust. And I'm going to do some hot foiling with the Pretty Pink Posh Hugs hot foil and die. And I'm going to use a secondary sentiment from the Mama Elephant Thank You, Love You stamp set. So uh, first what I'm doing here is I'm taking stencil one and I'm doing the first lightest color in carnation with the umbrella base. And then I'm going to take stencil two. I, I, I think they're A, B, C, D. So stencil B and that's going to be the detail layer for the umbrellas. And I'll do that in the darker shade, the peony which is the second color in the trio. They're pretty easy to line up. I used the lines on my stencil mat there to help line everything up. And I taped down my cardstock. I've just got an A2 panel that I will trim down uh, a quarter of an inch on all sides when I'm finished. but. To start off, we're just using a full A2 panel there. I've got the paw print there from Simon Says Stamp to help, old, to help hold my ink pad still. And then I'm just using a cloth to wipe away the most of the color on the stencil. I'll give them a good wash in the sink when I'm finished. But I'm going to use charcoal ink here and... I'm going to lightly blend on the charcoal color for the handle of the umbrellas. I didn't want to use black, uh, but I still wanted it to be noticeable, so charcoal color. Which I'm trying to think which, let's see, charcoal I think is the darkest color in that Simon Says Stamp Trio. Yeah. So I'm using a small blending brush for this just to get into those smaller spaces. And here is the reveal for panel one. Now there is a fourth stencil, it's the raindrops. And I'm gonna do that in a little bit here once I get the purple background done because I'm going to use Lawn Fawn's Fairy Dust stencil paste for that. So I'll set the pink one aside and I'll start the purple one and I will repeat the process. So the lightest color I'm starting with for the base which is lilac. I used my large blending brushes for the bases and even the detail layer on the umbrellas, but you could use a small blending brush too. I 
when I start my stencil or when I start blending onto, onto my stencil, I use, I load up the blending brush with some ink and then rather than tap some off, I start on the stencil that isn't on the cardstock um, and then kind of bring my brush over the areas where it'll blend onto the cardstock to prevent any sort of like pooling of the ink or any brush marks. And that seems to work well for me. And then I'm taking the darker color, the orchid, and blending on the detail layer for all of the umbrellas. I saw someone make a card where they made each different umbrella a different color, which I thought would be really fun to try too. And then I'm taking charcoal again for the umbrella handle. Line that one up. Use my small ink blending brush again. And I'm just using a really light hand to get that everywhere. So here's the pink one. And I tape it down just using my glass mat to make sure it doesn't move. And then I'll tape down the stencil a bit too. And then I'm going to pull out the Lawn Fun Fairy Dust Stencil Paste. It's like a clear paste with sparkle in it. Um, it's one of my favorites to use. And then I'm taking my spatula and putting a fair amount on the spatula. And then carefully blending or carefully pushing the stencil paste around over all of the raindrops. And you don't want too thick of a layer, but you also don't want too thin of a layer. So if you do too thin of a layer, you won't, you won't notice it very much once you pull the stencil away. But if you do too thick, then um, it can sometimes distort the shape that it leaves behind. So I'm going to do the pink panel here, and then I'm going to quickly set the pink panel off to dry. And then I'm going to pull in the purple panel here and do the same thing. And then whenever you're using stencil paste, it dries really quickly. And so you're going to want to take your stencil and your spatula and wash them off with warm soapy water as soon as possible. Otherwise, when it dries, it's, it's sort of like cement and it'll ruin your spatula and your stencil. And same with your glass mat. You'll want to wipe that off if you got any on there too. Or at least put them in warm water. And then I'm going to set aside the purple one to dry also. It only takes maybe five or ten minutes to dry on your cardstock. So while those are drying, I am going to hot foil. So this is my glimmer, my Spellbinders glimmer machine. And I'm using the Hugs hot foil um, plate from Pretty Pink Posh. And the colors that I'm using for foil are Spellbinders, so it's pink and then Lavender Petal for the purple. And so the sandwich that you use for your hot foil is you put your hot foil plate down, and then you put your foil down, and then you put your cardstock on top. And when I foil, I generally use Hammer Mill. You can use any super smooth cardstock, but Hammer Mill is just, I found it works well for me. So that's, that's what I use. Now I left this in here because I didn't like the way that it hot foiled the first pink hugs, but I wanted to show you that uh, it, it just needed to heat up a little bit more because when I hot foil the purple one, it works fine. And then when I hot foil the pink one again, it works fine also. So um, sometimes it just takes a little bit of trial and error. So I don't use any extra shims in my uh, machine when I'm hot foiling, but sometimes you might have to depending on how old your machine is. So there is oil, there is a, some overfoil, but that's okay because we're going to die cut out the hugs. So, so there's the cardstock on top of the foil, and then those are the plates that come with it. And then once your once your second timer light heats up, you just pull it out, run it through your 
die cut machine slowly and I only run it through once. If you run it through back and forth, it can shift and you'll end up with overfoiling. Here's the die, I'm gonna tape it in place, run that through my die cut machine for the pink and the purple. And then I wanted some dimension on the hugs, so I took some fun foam and die cut that out with the hugs die also. You could die cut it out from paper, that would also work. Or you could put foam tape on the back. So there's a few options you can go with. When you're putting the tape on your cardstock to hold the die down, make sure you don't put the tape on the foil. If you put it on the foil when you pull the tape up, it generally pulls the foil up also. So you just gotta be careful about where you put your tape. So layer the pink sentiment on the fun foam. That one looks good. Put a clear block on top to help hold everything down while the glue dries and then we'll do the same thing with the purple hugs. This one lined up a lot quicker than the pink one for some reason. Put them both under the block there for a while. So now here I have the pieces that I die cut from the shaker dies. So I die cut the um, umbrella base from Lawn Fawn Sugar Plum cardstock, and then the front piece also, and then the inside piece, that is Hero Arts Lavender, that's the light purple there that I'm going down right now. And then I'll do the same for the pink. So the darker color is Concord and Ninth Honeysuckle, and the lighter pink is Lawn Fawn Ballet Slippers. And so I'll glue all those pieces down. And then you can see off in the upper right there, that's the acetate that's gonna go on the very front to be the front of our shaker window. And when you're cutting out acetate for a shaker window, it works better if you use a thinner acetate so for these cards, I'm using Hero Arts, and I don't like to use glue with acetate because if any of the glue gets on the acetate, it's really hard to get off, and it, it looks like a smear on your shaker window. So I've got some red line tape. I'm going to go around the base, the base of the umbrellas there, and then carefully line up the acetate piece to make the window. And then once you get the acetate on, you can add some foam strips to make your shaker. And if you remove the backing from the foam strips, they're very pliable. So you can bend them to whatever shape you need. So bend them around the curve and bend them around the curve on the bottom. And there we have both pieces. So before we adhere the shaker piece to the card, we want to add our shaker bits. So these are the Pretty Pink Posh Pastel Swirls. So they're from their most recent release. Um, they're very springy. So they've got like these little candies um, and then little like solid color candies. Super cute. So I like to fill my shakers pretty full. So um, I feel, I'm filling them full here, and then I'm just carefully lining up the back and pushing that on. And I'll do the same for the purple. Make sure nothing's touching the foam. Spread them out a little bit. And by now, our panels are dried. So we can bring those back and 
look at how we're going to line them up. So for the handle to the umbrella, I'm using Lawn Fun, um, Lawn, Lawn Fun Silver cardstock. And then for the bottom of the handle, like where you would hold the umbrella, I'm using the darker color. So Honeysuckle and Sugar Plum. So we're going to adhere the handles to the handles <laughs> and then adhere the finished handle to the back of the umbrella just with some glue. I'm using my reverse tweezers to help hold those handles on there while the glue dries. Put a little bit of glue at the top and then position the umbrella over the handle where I want it. They're such cute little umbrellas. So those both look good. Now I'm going to pick the sentiment from the Mama Elephant stamp set. And I'm going to choose You Are Amazing for both, for both cards. So I'm going to pull out my Misty and I'm stamping on some Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock. So it's a very light gray. I'd say it's a cool gray. And then I'm going to take the Simon Says Stamp Ink and Charcoal. I didn't want to do black. I didn't want it to be too overpowering. So you, I'm using the same ink color that we have on the, on the backgrounds with the umbrellas. I'm going to stamp that once for each card. And then I'm die cutting it out using a flag sentiment strip die. I think they're a quarter inch wide and they fit perfectly on these little sentiments. So I'll line that up. I'll line up the die over the sentiments and then die cut them out quickly. I'll tape them in place so they don't move. With a little bit of post-it tape. And then I'm going to play around with where I want the umbrella and where I want the hugs and where should we put the secondary sentiment? I, I end up, it looks really cute on the umbrella. So I glue um, the You Are Amazing sentiment down uh, after I glue the umbrella down. And when you're gluing on acetate, you just want to be really careful not to get the glue on the acetate. So rather than putting the glue onto this, um, the back of the sentiment strip, I'm going to put the glue on the card and then use my tweezers to help me line up the sentiment strip and then push it down just a little bit. And then I'm also going to glue down the hugs just with little dots of glue everywhere. And I'll put my acrylic block on top of that. I very rarely use my large acrylic blocks for stamping anymore. <laughs> um, I usually use my Misty, but the large acrylic blocks work really well for holding things down until the glue has had a chance to dry. So sometimes I still use the small acrylic blocks, but um, I haven't used the big ones for stamping in, well, years probably. <laughs> So 
So I'll put that on the card, making sure it's straight, and put the acrylic block on top of that one. And now all they need are some embellishments. So I added a heart uh, to each card. I added a little purple heart to the purple card and a little pink heart to the pink card up on uh, the top of the umbrella. And then I'm taking the same shaker pieces, the pastel swirls, and I'm putting them in a little triangle tray. And then I'm picking out the matching colors. So for the pink card, I picked out some pink swirls and some pink um, solid color candy circles. And then for the purple card, I pick out some purple ones. So uh, let's see, I think I added five embellishments to each card. I generally like to stick to odd numbers if I can doesn't always work out that way but today it did <laughs> and so once I figure out where I want those I put them in the same place on each card and I'm just gonna adhere them down with a little bit of glue use my embellishment wand to put those all in place I think my favorite all those are my favorite embellishments are those little purple swirls. They're so much fun. And then we'll do the same thing to the pink card. The triangle trays are nice because you can just funnel all of your leftover embellishments right back into, into their little container or their bag or wherever you keep them. Makes it a lot easier than just dumping them out on your desk. Although sometimes I do still spell. <laughs> Then uh, I am going to mat my cards on the darker cardstock. So I mentioned earlier I trimmed um, a little bit off of each side of the dried panels. And then I'm using Honeysuckle and Sugar Plum cut into an A2 card panel and then adhering the card fronts to those before I adhere them to some top folding card bases. So here I'm using Altenew's uh, half inch ultra stick double sided tape and then just my tweezers to pull the backing off. It's a super sticky tape and I love it for this purpose. And there we go, those are the finished cards. I think they turned out really cute. You can see them shake. They're so much fun. They'll be great to send to someone in the mail or hand deliver. So thanks for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed today's cards and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a good day.